Thank you, Ashish. Thank you, organizers, and congratulations for a fantastic conference so far, and I'm sure it will be throughout. So uh, something to go upon further, what Sushrut was uh, talking about, the bifocal femoral fractures, which are a segmental fracture of the femur, neck, or intertrochantric, and the shaft. So as the theme for today's uh, this session, they are basically high energy trauma victims, usually have other injuries and polytrauma cases, and therefore the treatment becomes challenging, especially in terms of the timing of the surgery. There are many options available and described in the literature since Danley and Street first published in 1953. So the mechanism is on a flexed and an abducted hip, an actual force acting along the shaft produces a comminuted fracture of the shaft. The force further dissipates onto the neck. By that time, it has uh, reduced in its intensity and usually results in a simple fracture of the neck, though it is not a rule that it will be only a simple fracture. So this is what you get. The neck is either intracapsular or extracapsular, often a vertical fracture. Shaft is usually comminuted. And mind you, 40% of them have some knee injury or the other. Uh, this was the first meta-analysis on this topic which spoke that extracapsular fractures are more and an important fact that the shaft shows more complications. So further meta-analysis by Mohit Bhandari, the missing rate is as high as 30%. However, the avascular necrosis of the head is only 5% and it is not affected by the delay of surgery up to 5 days. What is more important is malunions and non-unions of the shaft are far more than in isolated femoral shaft fractures. So uh, from 44% which was described by Friedman, Paul Tornetta reduced it to 4% by doing a HRCT scan. Mind you, it's a high resolution CT scan of the hip uh, in all these suspected bifocal fractures. <clears throat> How do we avoid missing it? Obviously, we all take a pelvis with both hips in all shaft femurs. There is a capsular sign described uh, by Park, which talks about a soft tissue window of the CT scan and a one millimeter difference in the capsular thickness. That is suggestive of a missed or an occult femoral neck fracture. Or Rogers described a rapid limited sequence MRI of the hip. Now this is very difficult to do in a polytraumatized situation, but it supposedly takes only 10 minutes. We are not doing it. We are doing HRCT only. So this is obvious on a CT scan, but something which is not obvious, you draw a tangential line from the trochanter to the head and see the capsular distension in a soft tissue window of the CT scan and that if it is more than a millimeter, then it is indicative of hematoma within the capsule. So that's a capsular sign. We can utilize this in highly suspicious fractures. So these are the ones where iatrogenic so-called neck femurs are produced on the table, which were not iatrogenic, but they had a suspected fracture. Treatment options, either a single implant assembly, recon nails, long plates, long DHS, or dual implant assemblies, which are more uh, favored nowadays, retrograde nail with a DHS or CCS, or anti-grade nail with CCS, or a plate. <coughs> Mind you, there are many options, no level one evidence or consensus. So what are the dilemmas? What are the timings of surgery? whether single or dual implants, which fracture first, what position, etc. Hopefully we'll answer this by the end of this talk. Nailing, all of you know it's biological, can start early weight bearing, but technically the neck may get displaced while you're doing it. Uh, a simple example, neck femur with a comminuted shaft, nail with an anti-grade nail and CCS and healed predictably. Pleating has advantages of being technically easier to do with better control on both fractures and less radiation, but it's more blood loss and not biological. So if you're a pleater, this can uh, be simple to do. Pleat the shaft first, then address the neck, and it heals. What, what is the evidence? So there is no level one study. There cannot be a level one study. You cannot randomize this. But there are a few systematic reviews and meta-analysis. There is no study on what is the optimal timing it cannot be decided because they are usually polytraumatized patients, and there is no conclusive evidence on which is a better modality. But what we have today is that there is no method which is the best as described in literature. What is the worst is a single long DHS as per evidence. The incidence of avascular necrosis is only 3%. It's not related to the timing of surgery up to 5 days. 
so in a undisplaced neck neck a single recon nail is good enough um, if it is a displaced neck then two implants are better example a bifocal femur <coughs> comminuted shaft and a tibia along with young female this is immediate post op if you see this 6 months post op the tibia is healing femur shaft is showing a delayed union this is one year post op femur takes still longer time to heal but two years later it has healed the tibia is obviously healed and this is four years post op everything has healed another example a suicidal jump by a depressed uh, gentleman exactly identical fractures on both sides bifocal with patella bilateral this was what i did right side and the left side six weeks post op right side is showing callus the left side is not in the shaft at 6 months the left showed a delayed union so i advised him bone grafting but he was mentally deranged he refused it i dynamized it at one year the right side had fully healed patient was walking full weight bearing the left side is still not consolidated still not willing for any revision and <clears throat> at 2 years the right side healed and then the left side also healed so the shaft takes a longer time to heal because it's usually a high energy trauma you cannot back slap if there is a distraction and there is usually a tendency for delayed weight bearing due to the neck fracture what is the solution do an anatomic reduction of the shaft there should not be any distraction do early weight bearing do not be afraid of your neck fracture lock in a dynamic mode whenever possible or dynamize early so this is another polytrauma with a displaced neck and shaft <clears throat> these are the immediate post op x rays this is 6 weeks post op this is 3 months post op see that the shaft is uh, showing a little callus now this is 6 months and healed at 1 year but if you see this this went on to though it look good on immediate post op this is what happened 6 months post op dynamo auto dynamized and 3 years post op the shaft is not healed another example where this was the combination of the shaft i with the previous experience anatomically reduced it and it predictably healed so tips analyze the neck fracture first if it's minimally displaced you can do a single reconstruction nail temporary fix that with two dhs guide wires do a close nailing of the femur but if it is grossly grossly displaced you may need a minimal open reduction uh, and two implant assembly fix the shaft first convert it into a standard neck femur accurately reduce the neck either closed or open and fix the neck with screws or dhs two imp two screws or one screw two screw construct is better because the proximal diameter of the nail is smaller and over rimming by 2 mm is possible uh, if you use a single implant assembly see this this is an undisplaced neck while using a single uh, screw assembly the neck got displaced because of the uh, larger implant and went into a non union another example where same thing happened Thank the shaft healed and the neck went into an non union had to be revised thank you dr pradhan